Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Corey Johnson, and welcome to Sex Abuse Part 2. I am led by the Lord to just tell everyone all around this world my story. This is without rehearsal. I don't have any notes. And I'm going to tell you the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help me God. And uh, this is not about, you know, me trying to replicate a preacher or to sound like a pastor. It it don't have nothing to do with that. You know, this is about being real, and I'm trying my best to have self-control with not using any vulgarity. Okay. Oh, here go. I just pray to God in the name of Jesus that he give me guidance to remember to say everything that I have to say that's not just going to help myself or my healing, but it's going to help others that has been through the same abuse that I've been through or even worse. You know, because there's different types of sexual abuse it can be child molestation or it can be rape you know that can happen when you're a child or it can happen when you're an adult now I'm gonna pick up where I left off in my other message I was telling you where um, my uncle was telling me when I made 15 years old that that was evil what he did and he said that God has came into his life and Holy Spirit is his witness he changed and he's never gonna do that to me anymore or no other child now I have to remind you guys that I can't call out any names I'm just going to say the titles. Now back to when I was telling you when I was by my um, my antique house. Uh, when I used to always witness my uncle telling his, you know, his fiance niece how beautiful she is. And, you know, he used to say, you got beautiful legs. He, he mentioned that too. I heard him say that a lot. And how he say he would say how fine she is and stuff like that, you know. And um, so he used to uh, like to work out with me in martial arts, and I would have you know flashbacks. Of what he did to me when I was younger and I would tell him no I don't want to work out you know because you know I would tell him no because I didn't want his creepy hands on me at all and when I would tell him no I don't want to work out he would say let me show you this new move and he would grab my hand and my arm and put me in the wrist like he's a master at kung fu no, he know them jitsu and all kind of, you know what I mean? Steven, Steven Seagal moves that you see. Steven Seagal like above the law, you know what I mean? Or hard to kill. He knows all kind of methods. And when I tell him no, he will grab my wrist and I will say, let me show you. And he will grab me and twist me and flip me. Almost every time I went there, he always just had to touch me. And it, it worked on my nerves. He's really... You know, he's really a peasant and a creep. And one time, I snapped on him. Because he said, let me, let's work out. I'm going to show you something. And I say, no, I don't want, I don't want to, I don't feel like it. And he grabbed me. And I snatched and I look at him. I say, I say, don't touch me. And he smacked me up in my face. I must have was about. I say about 
16 or 17. You know. And I remember when um when Hurricane Katrina came, everybody had to evacuate. And I had went um I'm trying to see exactly how I went. I know I went some kind of way. I, I was by my my by mom first. And I had a bad feeling about staying there and and I like begged my mom to come but she said no. She stayed. But I forgot how, it was so long ago, but some kind of way. Yeah, I had my car. I know that blue car. I drove I've driven to my uncle. My uncle in the house. I then I parked my car. Then I got up in their van. They must have had a van or something. I went with them. That was the last time I saw that, that um, car too. And um, we went to Baton Rouge at this Christian camp. Now, what happened with my mother, um, the flood rose up and they were, they had to get to the roof. The, the water came all in their house, all the way up. So they had to go in the attic, kind of. Husband, my mother, and it was on the roof. So a helicopter had to come in, get them off the roof. I forgot exactly where they went after that, but I know I was in Baton Rouge, No, uh, I, I, I believe that Christian Kent was in Baton Rouge, if I'm not mistaken. And um, I was with my, my grandmother. You know, I spent a lot of time with my grandmother. I always, you know, a lot of time she was in the cafeteria. And I would go and sit by. A lot of time I saw my grandmother, uh, she... I was alone, sitting up in the kitchen, up in the cafeteria, you know, there at this, uh, it was this Christian camp, and I would go and sit by her, so she wouldn't have to have loneliness, you know, and I'd talk to her, because I, and um, I remember I was playing checkers in a recreational time, I played checkers with my uncle. The, the when I say my uncle, it's the one that sexually abused me, and um, he taught me how to play checkers, mm -hmm. and you know, he beat me a couple of times, and I did not beat him like three times straight, and I uh, and um, I beat him in front of his um his son. And I was taking five backers off from like one, two, three, four, five at a time. Every time he moved, I take one, two, three and get crowns. You know what I mean? He was the one that taught me you know, martial arts. Ever since I was young, he taught me checkers. So he always believed that he was the head, not the tail, and he never ever gonna uh, lose. And that's nobody's never gonna be able to out smart him or I'll thank him in these games, especially checkers. And I made a fool out of him. He got so mad. He, he, you see his eyes start turning red. It's just like he was try, he was so mad he, he was trying to hold his tears. But his eyes got so red. You know what I mean? It, it looked like he, I don't know what the with the say, but it was like so red, like he was catching pink eye or something. That's how red it got. And he got so mad, you know, he whispered up in his, his son ear after the third game. 
and he taught his son more than what he taught me in the martial arts. Is he taught his son more advanced stuff like how to paralyze people by touching in a certain place? He can make you paralyzed and can't move. He can make blood come out your eyes, ears, make your heart stop beating a certain brush of points for like 20 seconds. I mean, he knows some stuff that really can mess a person up very bad. He's lethal, he's dangerous. He's like a, a loaded gun with a bullet in the chamber at all times. That's how dangerous he is, you know. And he whispered up in his son, Ew, I, I'm, I'm only going to say my name. He said, I want you to work out with Corey. And I want you to go all the way. Now, when he said that, he thought I didn't hear that whisper, but I heard everything. And I know what all the way means. You know, because when I was younger, he used to always, you know what I mean, have me sparring against a lot of a lot of children my age. He had me sparring against my cousins. And, and when he, he just like this, this evil kung fu master on Karate Kid. I want you to break his bones. I want you to, to go all the way, break his neck, really go all the way with him, hurt him. You know, that's what he meant because he used to tell me that when I was young. I want you to go all the way with him. I want you to go force and everything I taught you. You know what I mean? No mercy. You know what I'm talking about? So I know what my uncle meant when he told his son that and his son looked at him like, Dad, are you, are you crazy? I can kill him. You know? But me and his son didn't work out. You know what I mean? Dang on. But, um, wow. I did, um, I was sitting next to my my uncle after, you know, after his son whispered back in his ear something. I didn't hear what his son told him. But maybe his son told him, no, dad, I don't want to do that. Please. And just got up and walked off. I didn't hear his son say that, but maybe he did say that because after he whispered in his dad ear, he got up and walked off. And and my uncle, he, he was sitting, you know, on, on the side of me, you know, so he put his hand on my hand very fast, like like he was about to grab my wrist and twist it. And I snatched it back, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I was scared. I was scared. He made me scared that he was going to take and pop my, um, my wrist or something, you know? So, um, uh, when the, when the time came, um, it's getting kind of foggy, but I remember at the time I, I, you know, at the, at the boot camp, I met this chick and the next thing I know, I left with her up in her car, you know, and she told me I can come and live with her. So... We went for a nice little drive to her, to her place, and I stayed with her for a little bit. And um, some kind of way, I, I forgot exactly what happened, but I had to wind up um, leaving her at one point, and I had to go and um, live in a church. Yeah, like thousands of people had to sleep on the floor. Everybody had to share two showers. And, um, I don't know how it happened, but some kind of way I was, um, I was back at her house for a little bit, and then some kind of way I was able to meet up with my mom and her husband. They say, no, um, I recall driving around with them. Licking, driving through where all the houses were smashed down with Hurricane Katrina. Then we went and we went to um, Jackson, Mississippi. Stayed by my auntie for a while. And then 
but the, yeah, in some kind of way, uh, I can't remember what else happened, you know. It's kind of foggy, but I do recall the last time I saw my grandmother and my uncle, it was at this hotel some kind of way. Yeah, I believe my uh, ex-girlfriend had brought me to the hotel some kind of way. Yeah. And then the next morning, I remember. It's out some kind of way. I don't know how. But I left. And, you know, Red Cross paid my ticket to come to Oregon. Okay, now we're about to get um, back to the subject now. I just want to give you a little relation of what happened, of, of how, you know, I wind up, you know, up here. Because I didn't want to, to live in um, New Orleans anymore because of the Hurricane Katrina. It's too inconvenient. I always have to evacuate quick as you get your money back. And buy all your stuff back, flood coming, you're losing it again. And I can't live like that anymore. So, um, when I got up here up in Oregon, I stayed with my ex um, stepdad for a while, Salem. That was in October 2005. And then um, I was able to find a job like nine days later. I believe, yeah, about nine days later. And uh, I moved in my own apartment the next month, which was November 2005. You know, at the time, when my um my my ex wife was alive and she passed away, God bless her soul, she died from cancer. But when she was alive, you know, she used to take my children away from me a lot and you know, before Hurricane Katrina came, she took my kids away from me. You know, so I didn't see them. I I thought that they probably lost their life in the storm. So when I moved to my own place some kind of way, um She contacted me, my wife at the time. She found me on Red Cross because I had put information on there. You know, she contacted my ex stepdad. So I was on the bus one time. My ex stepdad had called my cell and told me, Hey, your wife, you just called me and you gave me the information. So. She promised me she was going to come. Um, to me. For Thanksgiving. She stood me up. She didn't come. And she promised me she would come. Christmas. She stood me up. She didn't come. So, uh, finally, uh, I got my FEMA money in. But, um... So what happened in 2006, I contacted um, my uncle. And we was in contact backwards and forward. And I had asked him, where is such and such at? When I say such and such, that's his, um, his wife niece, the one that he sexually abused, and he told me, you don't want to have anything to do with her, she's out here bad, she's on, on drugs, she's, she, she's a hooker, she's this, she's that, she, she, you know what I mean, he don't want to have nothing to do with it, he was saying things to tell, to really scare me, not want to have anything to do with her, you know, so... Um, 
and that was up in 2006. So I'm gonna I'm skip a lot of this other stuff to get to the main part. Okay, the, the sexual abuse part and what's going on, the connection and stuff. So after that, you know, that was in two when 2008 came. I'm gonna skip that part. Get to the main part. When 2008 came, between 2007 and 2008, my mother was telling me that such and such is trying to contact you. And I said, I don't want to have anything to do with her because my uncle said, she's out here bad, she's out there bad, and stuff like that. You know, such and such. Well, I told you, you know who that is, right? The chick that my uncle sexually abused, which is his wife, niece. And I had to tell my mama three times, I don't want to have anything to do with her. My uncle said, I don't want to have anything to do with her, and I don't talk to her. So my mama bagged me and said, please call her like the fourth time. Please see what she got to say because she don't want to stop bothering me. She keep on, she needs to tell you something. She said, Corey, please see what she got to say. Just see what she got to say, please. I said, okay. So I called her in 2008. And in 2008, I was living up in um, Portland, Oregon at the time. I wasn't living in Salem anymore. You know, so we spoke and stuff like long time no here and stuff like that. Next thing you know, I had, I told her that my uncle told me that um, he don't want me talking to you. She was like, what? Yeah? Why? What did he have to say? I said, he said, you don't want to have anything to do with her anymore because she's out here bad. She's a, you know, she's a hooker. She's a prostitute. She's on drugs real bad. You know? And then she got angry and, and the pitch and the tone of her voice changed. She was like, you want to know why I'm so messed up and not here back? He, the mother effing reason why. You know, that's his word. And then she told me, he used to always sexually abuse me very bad when I was a kid. And it happened repeated times. You know? Now, while she was saying that, I remember, you know, what my uncle had told me when I was up in um, in New Orleans, when she tried to tell me when I was by her auntie house, the sexual things that he did. Remember I told you in um, Sex Abuse Part 1 that when I confronted my uncle by it, he said, that's not true. And she's lying. The Holy Spirit is his witness. He never touched that on her. Okay. So that came back. Now, when she was, the Holy Spirit was telling me, hear her out. Don't cut her off. So I continued to listen. And she started telling me, he used to tell me, don't tell your auntie because if you tell your auntie, you, I'm not going to be able to, you're going to get in trouble. I'm going to, you know, I'm not going to be able to take you to church anymore. You know what I mean? I'm not going to be able to do that no more. And, you know, they're going to hate you and, you know what I mean? She said, you know, you can't tell your mama because I'm not going to be able to do that anymore. And when she was telling me that, all that stuff was sounding familiar. I want my uncle used to tell me when I was young, you know, you can't tell mommy because if you tell mommy, I'm not going to be able to pop pop a chicken for you anymore. I'm not going to be able to, you tell papa, I'm not going to be able to take you to the show to see Bruce Lee no more. Now, all that stuff she was telling me, it was sounding familiar. It wasn't, you know what I mean? It was a little bit, you know, 
it's a little bit differently because of her auntie, her mom's you know, I can't do this no more. You, you can't tell your mama. I ain't going to be able to do this for you no more. That you can't tell your auntie. I'm not going to be able to do this anymore or that. You know what I mean? So that's the same tactic he used me. So I know right then and there, this girl is telling the truth. I remember, you know? So, um, the next thing I know, you know, you know, we just started talking and stuff like that. You know, she faxed me her, her, her story. You know what happened, you know, her complaints and stuff like that. Faxed me a picture of her and her, her kids, stuff like that. You know, her mental therapist and, you know, my mental therapist spoken together, stuff like that. You know, the other. Um, the other stuff I'm gonna keep that you know confidential if you know what I mean cause some things are meant to be you know kept quiet you know what I'm talking about because you never know you know if it's God's willing and this one up, up in court that's when all the important information will be released. You know what I mean? So my uncle had broken my heart all over again. You know, he just been taking advantage of my trust. You know, taking advantage of my, you know, f- forgiveness. Ever since I've been a child and growing up, he been always repeatedly saying he's sorry and he's changed. Holy Spirit is witness that he not going to do it no more or hurt nobody else, child. And he keep on doing it repeatedly. You know, and me and my mother been at this for years. You know what I'm talking about? My uncle been doing this ever since I was a baby, growing up, the pattern, you know, and, and he's not stopping because nobody is not calling the police on him, and nobody is trying to make him register as a sex offender. Nobody is not trying to re- report him, you know. My mother still up to this day. She don't want to report him. She's saying it's not going to happen. You know. My auntie. Which is a co-pastor. She refused to. To uh, report him. My mother. Is not. You know. Supportive of me at all. You know. my mother had told me that uh, after I told her she told me that you know after I spoke of my auntie's niece and you know and I told her the situation she was like that's my first time telling her the other things that you know he had done so my mother told me that I believe that was in 2008 or 2009 2008 or 2009 that she spoken with my uncle and um she say Corey said you did these things you know what I mean to him and my mama told me and my uncle say don't believe nothing Corey got to say the Holy Spirit is my witness. I have never did no sexual things to Corey. Nothing at all sexual to him. He's lying. And if I was you, I wouldn't support him. And uh, my mama had to tell him to stop lying. Because mama told me that 
how she snuck up them stairs and caught you and Corey in that back room when you was naked, how she had to beat you black and blue with that stick. And he was shocked and said, why didn't you tell me? And she said, because mama made me promise that not to tell you. You know, well, she I was scared I was going to kill you or something. You know, and and um, and she, you know, they wanted me to call her the police. She was scared they was gonna put her up in jail. That's how she beat you very bad. She, you know, I then that was her cue right then and there to tell him, you know. Why you lie to me like that? You know, you have your church. You just got your band, your, your, your big church. That's when he had his church at the time. And he loved her. And she was like the usher, very faithful, going to that church and helping out in the ministry, supporting him. But, you know, my mother, she didn't do anything still. You know, she was still going to his church and his usher. You know, a good mother would have would have told him, since you want to play me like that and tell me to not to support my son, and I just bust you in a lie, I'm going to stop supporting your ministry. You can count me out. I'm not going to go to your church anymore. Since you want to lie to me in my face like that. And play with me my son. Tell me to not to support my son. But my mama still went ahead. And supported him anyway. And up in that church. You know, you know I used to go to this church a lot. You know. I saw him looking at in between ladies' legs and stuff like that a lot and looking at their vagina. My mama even saw these occurrences that just kept on happening. And one, one time, you know, I remember my uncle had um, offered to ordain me to be a preacher. I had ordination papers. I had minister's license. And I told him no. And the reason why I told him no, because he plays with God too much. You know, all the time he'd be licking at the ladies' vaginas and stuff like that, and all in his church. Keep playing with God. So I don't want to be under nobody that's fake. Falling like that and playing with God. I don't want to follow behind his footsteps. You know? There's lots of time I've, you know, I've posted on Facebook a lot of the things that he did, you know, and he blocked me out, you know, when he used to be my friend. You know, if, 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 if T.D. Jakes would have been my uncle and, and he would have did that to me, he would have contacted me, he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have um, blocked now. He would have contacted me through Facebook messages and say, you know, Corey, please, um, that happened in the past. God has come in my life and I'll change. I'm very sorry you suffer like that. And I want you to go and get some mental help because I know that you can't help lashing out like this. You know, oh, are you trying to get some help? Where are you going? The Lord want me to bless you with some money. Here, I'm going to send you $5,000. You know, I hope they help you out. But please don't do that because God is coming in my life and I'm trying to save people. I don't need people, you know, to stop coming to my church. You know, I don't want to lose any members because the Lord has really convicted me and changed. So I'm coming to you in peace. Could you please cut that out? Can you, you know, I'm, I'm not, this is not about me paying you off. This is the, I want to bless you from putting you through pain, you know. 
T D Jakes would have came at me like that, but he did. He just blocked me out. Even his wife. You know, they got um Facebook pages, you know, I've I've left messages on her pictures and stuff. She just blocked me out. Instead of contacting me, you know, on private messages and say, oh, uh, because one time I had put help on my NTP. I put help. Now, why didn't she contact me and say, you know, Corey, I understand you're going through a lot of pain. I'm, I'm co-pastor. I'm going to pray for you that God will give you strength to heal from this. You, you've been through a great pain. And I pray to God in the name of Jesus that God will come into your life and help take away the hatred and help you, help you. Is there anything I can do? Is there any resources I can help to give you? Are you getting some mental help? What can I do to help? I'm not saying my prayers. I'm not kind of get angry and mad at you because I know, you know, I've forgiven him, but he, that, that, what he did, that could brain damage you. And that brain damaged my niece. So I can't get mad and angry with you guys because of something with my husband that's dead. He, he caused you guys to become brain damaged. You know, so you guys are getting help. He destroyed your life. I understand. So I can't get angry. But what they are doing, they are angry at me, pointing their fingers at me. It's like my mother. She said that you you are on your way to hell because you have hatred for your uncle. And God is going to put you to hell. And you're going to lose your blessings. You know, and then that's when I started cursing at my mom. You know what I mean? You know, I was like, how can how can you say the Lord is going to stop my blessing and going to put me in hell for something which your, your brother did? So, she just, you know, caused me to start cursing out and stuff. She's very disrespectful. You know, she just, uh, I, like this covert um, narcissist or something. She don't give me no kind of emotional support. She doing exactly what her brother told her to do. If I was sure I wouldn't support him, and that's exactly what she doing. She's always drawing crosses at me. Every time I turn around for years, God is going to take his hands off of you and he's going to stop your blessings. Like whenever I have mental breakdown, you know, mother, you know, that's the only person I have to talk to about my problems and about, you know, what I'm going through, how my uncle did to me. And she's just pointing her fingers, saying, you know, God is going to, you know, you're going to want him getting punished from God. is going to stop your blessings and he's going to hinder your blessings from coming and, and all this. Instead of her saying, God is going to punish her brother from doing that. Or make him go to hell. She's always coming to me. You know, Every time I turn around, she's messing things up for me. You know, one time I had, you know, he was being investigated. You know, by the FBI, my mama, I told my mama to not to, to tell nobody. It's my uncle being investigated by the FBI. My ex stepdad and I knew some contacts. Next thing you know, my mother stabbed me in my back and go tell co pastor. Co pastor told her husband, Now, you ever heard of blowing the FBI cover? You want to know why the FBI says that? Our cover was blown. Whenever they say that, that means they have to stop the investigation. That means it's dead. So, my mother ruined my chances of getting justice. She didn't want to get justice for me when I was a baby and I was helpless and I couldn't do nothing. And when I became an adult to get my own justice, she drew a monkey wrench in it. She hated on me. 
She, my mother is a player hater. You know what I mean? And ruin my chance of getting justice and ruin my chance of getting healing. You know? Every time I turn around, she just, you know, just obstruction. Every time I tell her to do something to get this message, give this voice message to my uncle and his own, his wife. She refused to do it. And she pretends like to be the attorney. She's very argumentative. She acts like she's on another football team. All the time. I feel like I'm the Saints and I feel like she's the 49ers. Every time I turn around, she don't support me at all. You know? Every time I turn around, I, the law reveals to me something I can do to help get justice out of him. She totally go against everything I got to say. Anything pertaining to her brother, she protects him. And she obstructs and just get in the way and prevent me from getting my justice of him. She always tell me it wasn't God's will for him to go to jail when he was you know what I mean in the past I say no you know don't put that on God it wasn't your will mom because you're the one who refused to call the police on him I told my mother that it's not fair I don't want her going to his church because he told her if I was you, I wouldn't support him. So, you know, since you didn't tell him that and you still going to his church, I would appreciate if you would stop supporting him since he he lied to you. That would help with my healing. And, you know, she told me it's not going to happen. I, I asked her, when you report him to child protection, she said it's not going to happen. He's not doing that now. I say, well, ever since I was a child, he's been doing this. Not just for me, but with other people's children. You know what I mean? And a lot of multiple years came by, he's still doing it. It never changed. Even up in his church, you even saw him looking, lusting after women, looking all at their vagina and stuff. You know what I mean? The stuff is still happening, and it's going to keep on happening because he's sick. Something is wrong with him. You know, and you know, my, my uncle right now, up to this day, he be on Facebook Live telling people it's all right to sin. It's only you ask God for forgiveness. And my, object, my objection to my mother was, you know, that's what he used to tell me when I was a young kid. It's all right to suck him as long as we ask God for forgiveness. And he always preaching about, you know, about some people don't rightfully divide the word of truth. And here he's not rightfully dividing the word of truth. Saying that it's okay, telling him that it's okay to, for people to sin as long as you ask God f- for forgiveness. You know? So, you know, I show him the correct way of rightfully dividing the word of truth by rebuking him like the Bible says, open rebuke is better than secrets of love. And that's why, you know, I'm making these recordings and and I say what I had to say about what I'm going through with him and what I have went through. You know? My own mother don't want to support me and be there for me. So, only thing I have is God on my side. I'm going to support my own self. You know? Alright guys, I'm about to cut this shot. I just pray to God in the name of Jesus Christ. That I'll be okay. And I pray for everyone that has 
been victimized. And the pastor or anyone, if you were sexually abused, I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. That God will help you, give you strength. And don't be afraid to come forward. I welcome you to reach out and to post videos how what happened if things happen to you sexually I give you my permission to put it in the video or audio and put it to my page sex abuse crime or child neglect I give you my permission don't be afraid to reach out because it's going to help you it's like vitamins you got to let this out you're going to have to let it out. You can't just keep, be quiet about it. You got to speak and let the world know what happened. It's going to help with your healing. And it's going to be justice. If you keep it in, the more you keep it in, you're going to develop mental issues and become an angry person. And you're going to have to let them demons out of you. You're going to have to speak it out of you and keep on giving out of you. Can you feel better? And may the Lord terrify the devil in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And start allowing the powers of heaven's fire to cast these preachers up in jail. And may the Lord thy God sentence them in prison in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May the powers of heaven open and may God avenging angels strike these preachers down to go to hell up in jail in the name of Jesus Christ. May justice be served. May the power of heaven allow the devil to punish all these preachers, all these false prophets and allow them to be arrested and allow them to go in jail in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May the power of God take away any blessings that these type of people have. May God cast them down to hell in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray prosecution. And whatever evil that the wicked one has brought against me, I reverse the curse in the name of Jesus Christ upon anyone that's in a church organization that's praying against me. Hey, I'm the victimized. I was victimized. I'm the injured party. So you can't get angry and say that I'm the devil because I'm trying to hurt you and come against you. No, you the devil. You give me and a lot of other children mental problem and cause us to be hurt. Don't call us a devil. Use the biggest devil because you are a golden sheep clothing. You are fake, just like the Bible say. You are a false prophet. The Bible say, beware of false prophets. And the law in the Bible say that, you know, the law will forgive. If you commit a sin, but if you blaspheme against the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, God will not forgive you. You blaspheme against the Holy Ghost when you say, Holy Ghost is my witness. I've never did anything sexual. Ever since I was a child, all the way to adult, you're still lying, saying the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost is your witness. You never did nothing sexual. But you blaspheme against the Holy Ghost. Because you lie, and you know what the Bible says about touching the child, making the child, you know, bringing the child into sin and stuff. And I have scriptures on that and stuff. You know, I'm talking about that, and I got a lot of scriptures on sex abuse part one. I read it and see what the scriptures say. I am not making this up. Something. Something is the matter with you, and something is the matter with a lot of these other preachers. It's like the Bible say, a third of the angels was kicked out of heaven. The reason why God kicked these third 
a third of the angels out because a lot of them are you. You are one of the devils that came, that was kicked out of the heavens. And a lot of the third angels that was kicked out of the heavens are your preachers. And you sexually abusing so many children. That's why you got Catholic, Baptist, you're all on TV getting arrested. Everybody getting arrested, sexually abused. You are the third of the angels. And may the God strike you down up in prison next. You are sick. You're not trying to get no help. You need some mental therapy. You need your minister's license revoked. Everybody up in your church, they need to know that you're a predator. You need to be registered as a sex offender. That's what you need. You keep on preaching, talking about you got the favor of the Lord and you the heads and not the tails. No, you're not the head. You're not the head. You are the tails. And may the power of God make you the beneath. And may the power of God hinder your prayers. And may the power of God shut you down. And may Michael the Archangel shut you up. And he will. And I pray to God in the mighty name of Jesus for justice. Not just for me, but for other victims. For other precious little children that was victimized. They have adults that's still going to hell because of what you've done. There's little precious children that's still within these adults. Some people minds they can't, you know, they worse off. They got worse mental problems than me. Why? Because of you. Because your wife not trying to stop you. My mother's not trying to stop you. You never registered as a sex offender. And nobody up in your church knows. You're taking a lot of pictures. All these children up in your arm. You're picking them up. They have no idea. And my mother and your wife. You're keeping their family secret. And you're protecting the ministry. Instead of protecting these other innocent children. That's why God took them away to church. That big church you had. Because God don't like ugly. You want to know why you had so much bad luck all your life? You had to wind up living with people. From losing everything. Housing everything. Because God don't like ugly. God said the curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked. And your wife has allowed you to do wicked. And she knows better. That's why God had took her blessings away. Because God said my people are destroyed by the lack of knowledge. And she is an accessory. Because she knows what you did. And she didn't try to call the police. That's an accomplice. My mother knows what you did. What you did was condoned. They're still supporting you. Lifting you up. And they're putting other people, children, up in danger. They're not trying to protect other children. You're not warning nobody that this man has did a lot of dangerous things with children. And I was a kid. I remember you used to hang, hang around this this other man. I, I, I got to remember, I can't say no name. But he's up in prison right now. He had all kind of aggravated battery, child molestation, and all kind of... Multiple felony felony counts with children. Aggravated rape one, rape two, sexual assault. I mean, all kind of sexual batteries. It's multiple. He must have about 17 counts and he's still, you know, he was dangerous. I remember when I was a kid, you know, I saw him with a lot of other kids and I went to his house. I mean, the kids went to his house. And he took out his thing. He was all on hard. He didn't touch me. He didn't do nothing sexual. Okay, but I do remember he punched a hole up in the wall to try to show us that he's strong. You know? And then the type of dangerous people you used to hang with. You know? 
And I, I've never understood why my mother didn't get me, you know, tested for sexually transmitted disease. You know? Because, you know, it's a strong possibility, you know, you and him could have had sex. Y'all could have been doing each other in the butt. You know? And my mother didn't care to get me you no know, mental health. My mama used to tell me when I was a baby, I used to walk up to other babies and bite them. Well, my uncle did something bad to me. I don't know. You probably put me put me to sleep, put a pill or something. You did something bad and evil to me. Some things you did, I had no idea. But you did a lot of ugly bad things. And God is going to punish you. You're not showing... No kind of remorse. You know. Your apologies. You know were not meant. You was not sincere. You are the same. Yesterday. Today and forevermore. And to the day you register as a sex offender. People need to keep their eyes on you. They need to know who you are. They need to know that you are the devil. It is time to God to punish you more. God is not finished with you. It is time for you to get arrested. It is time for the angels to really strike God's judgment upon you so you can get the mental help that you need. You're sick. You're a sick person. You will come out better. Go and register yourself. As a sex offender. Because your day is coming. Your day is coming up in court. And that will mean a lot to the judge. If you show the judge that you registered on your own. That will cause the judge to have mercy on you. And to say okay I see that you're showing remorse. And you know what I mean. That you did this on your own. So I'm not going to sentence you. I'm going to give you a chance to be on house arrest. You have to put you on house arrest and just say that you can't preach around the congregation, but you can stay preaching up in your house. But you got to register. You know what I mean? But since you registered, I'm going to give you a break like that. But if you go to court, you're going to get busted in several lines. And the judge is going to ask you, are you a registered sex offender? Did you register yourself? You're going to say no. It's going to show that you don't care. You're not taking no responsibility. The judge gonna want to know: Did your wife call the police? She's gonna say no. And the judge gonna have to prosecute her for accessory because there are the laws. If a person know that another person has committed a sexual crime against a child and if they don't report them, you're going to jail for accessory. Same goes for my mother. That's what y'all get. From protecting the devil. And you know better. The Bible says stay out the paths of the wicked. And my mother had been following my uncle Pat. Ever since I was a child. And she, the Lord had been showing her back to back. Constantly. That he's no good. That he's folk. That he's false. Sorry about that. He's fake. He's a false prophet. Side the path of the wicked. She's still is serving him. Even though he played her. Say, if I was you, I wouldn't even support him. She's she doing exactly what, 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 what he said. And she don't want to do what I said. She don't want to stop. Get help with my healing. She's still is supporting him. She be giving him holy kisses on his jaw. That's my pastor. And she always showed me, Corey. My brother means more to me than you. That's all she's saying. My mother is not to be trusted. She's not on my side. She means me no good. My mother do not have my best interest at heart at all. You guys. That's why I live so far. I haven't even decided to go back. down there. We live thousands of miles away. My mother is no good at all. And I'm only telling you the truth. You know, and 
it's sad because, you know, I'm not the only adult that's going through this. There's lots of ladies, millions of them. You can look at the videos on my sex abuse on crime page. You know, they got lots of uh, YouTube videos of ladies and men. You know what I mean? They going through with them, going to tell about how their mother neglected them, rejected them. And a lot of them don't want to have nothing to do with their mother. I can't blame them. You can't say that they're bad people because they hate their mom more. No. You know, the Bible say just to um, come from under those. They come from among those. You know, I don't want to be, I don't want to be a part of no fake people and phony people and hypocrites. I am not one of you anymore at all. Okay, guys. It's been an hour, and I'm going to cut this short. You guys have a good one. Please share, comment, and thank you for visiting. Take care.